So um, I'm Pablo, I'm Jonathan couldn't be with us, but he's a PhD student and I'm a postdoc in the same group in the University of Chicago. And we work partly on uh, studying liquid crystals and uh, I will be presenting the work we do and, and, and how we use Julia to study the systems. So first, what are liquid crystals? So liquid crystals are these like intermediate state of matter that behaves like a liquid, but, but still have some characteristics of crystalline solids. So if you can see, you, you have all of these elongated particles lying in the same axis, r roughly, and this imposes interesting uh, optical properties of, uh, in the systems. So another class of li liquid crystals is this so-called lyotropic liquid crystals. And in these uh, properties of the system also depend on the concentration. And examples of these are abundant in uh, biochemical uh, systems. Uh, and in biology, like a school of fish c c could be thought of a sort of lyotropic liquid crystal, but also like the uh, cells in the liver align themselves as a liquid crystal. And the other systems that are interesting and uh, where you also have energy coming in from the medium to produce movement uh, is the systems of microtubules connected by these kinesin proteins that are like molecular motors that uh, bend these long shapes of microtubules and produce these shapes. And these shapes have these topological defects that are, uh, are classified on multiples of minus one half. And these analyze them and or can be created. And these are important to study the dynamics of these systems. And I, won't, I, I will stop talking about biology because that's not exactly my field, but I will switch to describing how we uh, simulate these systems. And uh, the way we do it is, instead of using this director field I was uh, speaking of, we, we use this tensor property that allows us to recover the, the dynamics of these topological defects I was talking about. And we do this generally by solving this sort of equation, which is a very, uh, very set word equation. But the issue with this is that for describing these uh, systems that depend on the concentration, uh, here the concentration doesn't appear anywhere. And we don't have really a framework to do so. And this is mainly the work, the, the PhD work of Jonathan. So he is developing this framework based on this uh, generic framework for non-equilibrium thermodynamics. And this is kind of how the equations we have to solve look like. We have equations for the density, the concentration, the mass, the velocity fields, and the uh, disorder parameter that describes the orientation of these particles. And we have to solve this. And this part here, of the Navier-Stokes, uh, is the hydrodynamics. We solve this uh, in a PDE fashion, but the rest of the equations we sol solve as ODEs. So I'm kind of describing here what's the strategy we follow. So we, we have a single array of, uh, of a flat array of, of uh, scalars, and we reinterpret this depending on the strokes that describe either the order parameter or the concentrations on, on the di different parts we have in these equations. And we switch back and forth between the strokes of arrays or arrays of strokes, depending on what we need to do. And uh, we try to use the uh, method of lines package and the modeling toolkit at some point, but uh, it's not designed to really handle the, the things that we need to do. So we had to implement our own finite difference operators, but with Julia and multiple dispatch, that's pretty easy. And we, with, with that, we then uh, apply these operators and solve separately the hydrodynamic, as I said. Where we use a lattice Boltzmann method with Trixie. At the time when we started working on this, the interface for Trixie for this wasn't really developed, uh, but the Trixie guys are really phenomenal and they uh, kind of wrote the documentation for ex extending these custom semi discretization um, strategies that allowed us to couple the ODE to the PDE. And then we solve this uh, iteratively. So, and we have to do a more uh, strokes of arrays and uh, arrays of strokes switching. But here's how they are custom finite differences uh, operators look like. It's, it's just a one stroke 
uh, uh, with a tag that basically tell, tells us what's the type of uh, operator. And we have this interface, which is pretty simple. And then we have a single uh, in-place method for the product of the operators on any sort of array. And this is an example of how the stencil operator w uh, works for gradient. But you just change the definition based on your on your o operator, but the the, the ap applying the, the operator is exactly the same for all, for all of them. Um, so with that, we we are able to take to test uh, to to test different cases. For instance, we we can check the limit where we remove the hydrodynamics, and we only have dependency on the concentration and the uh, director field, and we are able to reproduce experimental uh, results that study this uh, chromoglycate uh, particle. Mm -hmm. uh, if we put these liquid crystals in a cha in a micro fluidic channel, then we're also able to recover the correct dynamics in a, in a uniform wet flow. Oh, or if we m make, make the system uh, independent on the concentration, we are able to really capture the dynamics of the of this defects and how they annihilate. And l lastly, if we put everything everywhere solve all at once together, then we're able to really capture the dynamics of these uh, micro tools I was talking about in the beginning. Um, so, so finally, uh, what we did is we took these combined PDs and ODEs, and we were able to combine them together by using this Trixie sem semi-discretization -di uh, uh, strategies. And this allowed us to uh, verified theoretical the, the theoretical framework that was developed by Jonathan and see that it really allows us to recover the correct dynamics of the of the lyotropic liquid crystals. We still need to test against more systems like 3D or multi-component mixtures, but these are very challenging uh, systems. And one of the trickiest things for this is finding. Like all of these equations have parameters for how the different particles interact with them themselves, and we cannot measure this experimentally. So we don't know what parameters we have to throw in to solve these equations. So th this really suggests a way of doing end-to-end -end differentiation of the whole set of equations, trying to find wha what's the values of the parameters that give us the correct experimental dynamics. And with that, i like to thank you, and I would like to uh, Thank our supervisors and and that's it. Thank you, thank you, Pablo. Uh, we have time for one question, I think. If there is one, yes, uh, please take the mic. Yeah, you mentioned transformations between AO, AOS and SOS. I wonder why it is necessary to do this. Uh, it's in part because of the. The different equations we're trying to solve, uh, w some of them use uh, w only require the gradients of the vector fields or the scalar fields, but other require the Laplacian or the uh, divergence of some of these. So we cannot handle everything uniformly in order to compute all the quantities we need. So that's why we kind of have to do this back and forth, depending on what the operators we need to use for each equation. Uh, thanks, Pablo. Uh, round of applause.